السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم يا ربنا لك الحمد كما ينبغي لجلال وجهك وعظيم سلطانك اللهم يا مقلب القلوب والأبصار ثبت قلوبنا على دينك السلام عليكم everyone uh, إن شاء الله today we will be uh, finishing the last part of سورة الواقعة Last time we stopped at فَلَا أُقْصِمُ بِمَوَاقِعِ النُّجُومِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying in this ayah then I swear by the setting of the stars. If we look at the word لَا لَا means no, I don't. So what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying here in this ayah, لا حاجة لي أن أقسم ولكن إن أردت أن أقسم فأقسم بمواقع النجوم. There is no need for me to swear, to swear to anything. But if I am to swear, I will swear by the setting of the stars. And normally we, uh, during all uh, the uh, explanations of the swearing that uh, we pass through in uh, uh, 30 and uh, later on, we know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he wants to swear, he swears with, with something great. And he swears to something great also. So... The, uh, both sides are great, the things that he is swearing to and the things that he is uh, um, he's talking about. So what is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, talking about here? Allah is saying, وَإِنَّهُ لَقَسَمٌ لَوْ تَعْلَمُونَ عَظِيمٌ And indeed, it is an oath. If you could know most great. So it's a, a great oath. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is swearing with the stars, with the positions of the stars. And in Surah Al-Nahl, he says, And landmarks, and by the stars, they are guided. You know, earlier they didn't have uh, the technology we have here. They would look at the stars at night and they would know where east, west, north, uh, south. They would know, uh, uh, they would look at the sky. They would know, uh, 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 they would have a lot of information just from looking at the stars and what they mean, where they are located and so on. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is swearing and he is giving a great oath about what? Innahu la Quran Kareem. It is indeed a noble Quran. So Al Quran is the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that was revealed by Allah to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam through Angel Jibreel alayhi salam. And the way it was revealed, we there is an expression in Arabic. It says, نزل القرآن نجوما or منجما which means the Quran was revealed to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam five ayahs, five ayahs. And these five ayahs are called Najm. So Najm means a star. So we have a Quranic star, and we have a star that's in the heaven. Innahu la Quran Karim, and this is the link between the Quran and the previous uh, ayah, the Qasam, the oath, where Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is uh, uh, giving, is swearing. Innahu la Quran Karim. What is Karim? Kareem is generous, and the generous one is the one who gives whatever he has without being stingy and without keeping anything to himself. 
because he knows that when he gives, Allah will reward him back. <clears throat> now, the Quran is described by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as being kareem, as being generous. How and why? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, the more you read the Quran, the more you will explore in the Quran. If you have any book that you, you read once, you can read it twice. If you are in love with the book, you would read it three times, but then you would get bored if you read it more and more. But the Quran is not like that. The Quran is so generous. When you read it, the more you read it, the more you find that you are in love with this book. You will never ever get bored of reading the Quran. You will never ever get bored of repeating reading khatim after khatim after khatim. Because the, the, the light you would give from the Quran, the blessings that you would get from the Quran, the understanding that you would get from the Quran is way so vast. And when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us the ability to understand something, a special meaning in the ayah, a special secret in the Quran, that this is a blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Imagine the futuh, imagine the opening that he has uh, assigned to you in particular to be able to understand something special in the Quran. So the Quran is so generous with all it gives, with all it has in itself. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, innahu la Quranun kareem. It's a noble Quran, it's a generous Quran, في كتاب مكنون in a register well protected it was all in the لوح المحفوظ in the preserved tablet لا يمسه إلا المطهرون none touches the Quran except the purified this is one meaning this is the general meaning, but the inner meaning of this ayah is لا يمسه إلا المطهرون is we said that the, the Quran is in the preserved tablet. So the only creatures that would touch the Quran in the preserved tablet are the angels and they are purified from any wrongdoing, they are purified of doing anything that would not satisfy Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They are purified from everything. So Al-Quran, Al-Quran Al-Kareem is well preserved. It is preserved from any additions, any amendments, any crossing, anything. It is preserved. And do you know how the Quran is preserved? It's not through the writing of the Quran. No, so many books are written, but none of them are preserved as the Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made people memorize the Quran since the time of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam until this day and until the day after. So having the Quran in the heart is and transmitting it to, to, to generations after generations after generations is the way of protecting the Quran and preserving the Quran. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the uh, about the Quran, when we say لا يمسه إلا المطهرون, we explained that this word al المطهرون are the angels, and the reason we have another reason for that, when Allah wants to talk about man, that the uh, man is purified, he will say al insan uh, uh, about man, he will say متطهرون. 
And he mentioned in, in Surah Al-Baqarah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِنَّ اللَّهَ يُحِبُّ التَّوَّابِينَ وَيُحِبُّ الْمُتَطَهِّرِينَ he didn't say he didn't say al mutahirun the al mutahharun he said al mutahirin you hibbu tawabina wa you hibbu al mutahirin so al mutahharun is a reference to malaika and al mutahirin is a reference to humans tanzilun min rabbil alameen it is a revelation from the Lord of the worlds. As we mentioned now that the Quran is preserved in the, in the tablet and it was revealed in one shot to, from the uh, tablet to the lower uh, sama, to the lower sky in on Laylatul Qadr. And then it came Five ayahs by five ayahs to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created man. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed the Quran. So in the Quran, there is a complete program, a complete catalog for the man who was created by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah explains this in Surah Taha in Ayah 123 when he said, يَشْقَى There should come to you guidance from me. And this guidance is the Quran. Then whoever follows my guidance will neither go astray in the world nor suffer in the hereafter. So there is a program, there, is a, uh, uh, there are steps for man to follow. If he follows these steps, then he will, be, he will be highly rewarded in the day after. He will not go astray in this dunya. Um, the, so then is it to this statement, to this Quran, that you are indifferent? What does this mean? The word mudhinun is plural. The, the singular word, uh, form of this word is al-mudhin. And al-mudhin is the one who says nice words, but deep inside his heart, he would, uh, he would have something completely different. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says uh, in Surah Al-Baqarah, وَإِذَا, وَإِذَا لَقُوا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا قَالُوا آمَنَّا وَإِذَا خَلَوْا إِلَى شَيَاطِينِهِمْ قَالُوا إِنَّا مَعَكُمْ إِنَّمَا نَحْنُ مُسْتَهْزِئُونَ And when they meet those who believe, they say, we believe. But when they are alone with their evil ones, they would say, indeed, we are with you. Uh, we were only mockers. So they they show something, but they had completely different thing. And the word al-hadith, as I mentioned, is the Quran. And Allah mentions this word uh, uh, in reference to the Quran, that it means the Quran in uh, another surah when he says, Allah nazzala ahsan al-hadith kitaban. Allah has sent down the best statement, al-hadith, the same word, statement in our case, a consistent, uh, a consistent book, kitaban, the Qur'an. So the Qur'an is always new in what it has in a way that whenever you read it you understand something in you so what is the meaning here what do law to do for everybody has a hadith and to mudhinun are you indifferent to this quran 
But in Surah Al-Qalam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Waddu law tudhinu fayudhinun. The same words. They wish that you would soften in your position so they would soften towards you. They wished that Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would accept to worship their idols one year and they will worship uh, uh, his Lord one year. They, accept, they would accept anything that he would do just to be away from, uh, uh, from this new religion that he has, uh, he has come with. But of course... This is Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the most trustful, the, mo the most trustful, the most, the, the, the most caring about the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and about the amana that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given him. وَتَجْعَلُونَ رِزْقَكُمْ أَنَّكُمْ تُكَذِّبُونَ And make the thanks of your provision that you deny the provider? Is this how you thank the provider? So let's go a little bit deeper into this ayah. وَتَجْعَلُونَ رِزْقَكُمْ Rizq in, uh, means anything you would, you would have that will benefit you. So it's sustenance, but what type of sustenance? It might be money. It might be health, it might be wisdom, it might be muscles, it might be power, it might be anything that benefits you. It's called rizq. So when you have any benefit, then you should thank the one who gave you this benefit. You should thank the provider of this benefit. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created, created everybody from nothing and he provided for them. But what is the reward? They th th did they thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? No, they denied, they belied. I instead of thanking, they did the opposite. Now, if we link this, this ayah to the previous ayah about the Qur'an, we find that the Qur'an is a complete provision for us. Complete and continuous. We will always get benefit from the Qur'an. The blessings are continuous. They will never, they will never uh, decrease or they will never stop. So how should we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the blessings, for the blessing of having the Quran? We should learn how to read it. We should uh, understand it. We should try to find the secrets in it. We should keep reading it over and over and over until the light of the Quran is deep inside our heart. And we should always say, Alhamdulillah. We should always thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we are able to read the Quran. So if someone can read one, one page a day, try to make it two pages. If you can read 10 pages, try to make it 15. If you can read one juz, make it two juz. Thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for this blessing. There's so many people, so many Muslims who don't know how to read Quran. And I don't mean the non-Arab speakers, I mean even Arab speakers. This is a blessing, Allah will not give it to anyone. Allah will not give it to those who, doesn't, who don't deserve it. If you know how to read it, thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Say, Ya Rabbi, laka alhamdu kama yanbaghi li jalali wajhika wa azimi sultanik. Allah has chosen you out of millions and billions and billions of people to be able to read his words, to be able to read his book. Do not deny the Quran. Do not belie the ayahs of the Quran. When you read it, Sayyidina Umar, when he used to read the Quran, 
whenever he would pass on ayah that has uh, a request for uh, forgiveness, he would say, Ya Allah, forgive me. Whenever there is an ayah that would ask for uh, any, any dua, he would say that dua. Do not just read just words without understanding what you are reading. Try to understand. And when you have the intention of trying to understand, Allah will facilitate you, will facilitate the way for you to understand it. Allah will help. Allah promised. If you want something, I will give it to you. Make dua and I will make that happen. And the closest we are to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is before Fajr prayer, when Allah descends down to the, to the lower sky and he would say, is there anyone who is asking for maghfira, for, uh, for forgiveness, I will give him. Is there something, someone who is asking for any dua, I will answer his dua. And also, so this is the first position before the Fajr prayer and while we are making sujood. The closest to from a servant to be to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is when he is making sujood. So be generous to yourself. Be generous and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the highest that you can say, uh, ask for. Don't ask for Jannah, ask for Al Firdaus Al A'la. Ask for the, the, he's the most generous. You are asking from the most generous. So you have to know what to ask. And keep asking. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves to hear the, the voice of his obedient servant, of his loved servant. Now the ayahs shift a little bit. And the, this shift is amazing. Allah is challenging those who deny and those who belie. فَلَوْلَا إِذَا بَلَغَتِ الْحُلْقُومِ وَأَنْتُمْ حِينَئِذٍ تَنْظُرُونَ وَنَحْنُ أَقْرَبُ إِلَيْهِ مِنْكُمْ وَلَكِنْ لَا تُبْصِرُونَ Then why, when the soul at death reaches the throat, and you are at that time looking on, and our angels are nearer to him, to the one who is dying, than you are. But you do not see. Now the picture is that we have people who denied and belied all their life. Allah is challenging them now. Death is there. They are dying. And people around are looking at that person who is dying. No one can save him from death, and no one can even save himself from death. And Allah says, So when their time, when the time of death has come, they will, they will not remain behind an hour, nor they will precede it. So what's the picture here? As I said, Allah is challenging those who denied at their deathbed. So a man can either uh, uh, fulfill the orders of Allah or he can deny them. He can uh, do bad things. But everyone is in the control of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No one can push death away. Even those who, even those who, be, who uh, 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 promised, even those who opposed earlier, they cannot push death when it comes. And as I said, this is a, a challenge from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to those who are dying. You belied all your life. You did not believe in death. So try to, to delay it. Nobody can do that. Even the people around the, the one who is dying, they are looking at him and they are watching the agonies of death and uh, uh, they are... Uh, they are not able to do anything. 
So uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying وَنَحْنُ أَقْرَبُ إِلَيْهِ مِنْكُمْ وَلَكِنْ لَا تُبْصِرُونَ so this is the companionship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah is available everywhere. Now let's think of something. The soul is the one that controls the human. Is, the, is what controls the movement of man. So without it, without the soul, the man dies. And there will be there will be no movement in man. Can you say where is the soul inside yourself? Where is it? Is it in your head, in your eye, in your nose, in your hand, in your feet? Where is it? You cannot see it. And you cannot say that there is a special place for it. You don't know where it is. Now, what about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who is managing the whole universe? You cannot say that he has a place. The soul manages your life and you cannot identify its place. How can, uh, how can you say where is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? How can you specify where is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? So something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created, which is the soul, cannot be recognized, cannot be seen, cannot be, uh, 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 the, its place cannot be known where it is. So how can we realize Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala whom we cannot how can we identify the place of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who has no place? But when we say, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَنَحْنُ أَقْرَبُ إِلَيْهِ مِنْكُمْ We are closer to, to this dying person or our angels are closer to him. Then the companionship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not by knowing, but by his uh, by 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 himself, nothing like him. فَلَوْلَا إِنْ كُنْتُمْ غَيْرَ مَدِينِينَ Then, why do not, if you are not be controlled, if you know that we cannot, we do not control you, we do not control your affairs, why you couldn't just push death away? تَرْجِعُونَهَا إِنْ كُنْتُمْ صَادِقِينَ Bringing the soul back, bringing it back, if you should be truth, truthful, can you do that? Since you cannot bring back the soul, this means that you are under the control of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Even if you have the choice in some issues, what to do, what not to do, but there are other issues that you have no control on. And death is one of them. Now people died. We mentioned in the, at the beginning of the surah that there will be three groups. And this is one of the miracles of the Quran that it is connected. The surah is connected from beginning to end. So Allah talked about these groups and he is going to end with these groups. He will talk about the reward or the uh, punishment of these groups. If the deceased person now is of the foreigners and we described at the beginning who are the foreigners, as-sabiqun, they were, since they started the life, they were obeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They were worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They lived their life obeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They did not uh, disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when they died, they died on the same thing. So those are al-muqarrabun ila Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So what's their, what's their reward? 
فروح وريحان وجنة نعيم. Then for him, for those, for this person, there will be mercy from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and bounties and gardens of pleasure. What is الروح? فروح. الروح is the, uh, the uh, relief of, from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's the mercy from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Yusuf, وَلَا تَيْأَسُوا مِنْ رَوْحِ اللَّهِ Despair not of the relief of, from Allah. Despair not from the mercy of Allah. And the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is vast. And it is related to the one who is giving the mercy. And, Allah, and the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has no ending. Now, what is ar-rayhan? Farawhun wa rayhan. Ar-rayhan الريحان هو كل ما هو طيب وجيد وذو رائحة جيدة. Everything that's good, everything that that's tasty, everything that has good smell. Now what is جنة نعيم؟ نعيم النعيم is anything that that is good, that is beloved, that is uh, liked, and there will be no harm of it. In dunya, in this dunya, someone loves food and that's something that's uh, something good. So he will eat whatever he wants. But after that, there will be some problems in the stomach, in the intestine. So this blessing, this food was a blessing, but there is some sickness out of it. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Ta'amul Jannah, the, the food about the food of the Jannah, Fakuluhu Hani and Maria. It's in Surah An Nisa. Eat it in satisfaction and ease. There is no harm after you eat it, no matter as much as you eat, you will feel you will feel the blessings. So this is the first group. Now what's the second group? And if he was of the companions of the right, then the angels will say, peace for you. You are from the companions of the right. And again, the difference between as-sabiqoon, as-sabiqoon, and ashabul yameen, ashabul yameen are the people who, who did some bad things in their lives, but they repented and they, and they became so good that their life ended as in, in, in a good way that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepted that Allah is pleased with them. So this is the difference between as sabiqun as sabiqun wa ashabu al-yameen. So these people would, go, would be led into, into Jannah in groups. Each group will say salam to the other. Or the word salam here means also the angels will send salam to them. Even it might be what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in Surah Yasin, Salamun Qawla Mir Rabbir Rahim, peace, the greeting said to them by the directly by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is the second group. Now the third group, min So those beliers, those deniers who went astray there. For them is the accommodation, the accommodation of scalding water. So the word nuzul, as we mentioned last time, is if someone is traveling, he would he would choose a nuzul, a small hotel to to be in, to rest in, and it also means what was prepared of food and drink for the people uh, who are visiting. So their place, their final destination will be from of scalding water. So this is the food that was prepared for them. This is the drink that was prepared for them. to Jahim and pain is what they will get there because they are burning in hellfire. 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, سَوْفَ نُسْلِيهِمْ نَارًا كُلَّمَا نَضِجَتْ جُلُودُهُمْ بَدَّلْنَاهُمْ جُلُودًا غَيْرَهَا لِيَذُوقُ الْعَذَابِ so we will drive them into hellfire. Every time their skins are roasted through, we will replace them with other skins. So they may taste the punishment. Scientists uh, try to know the center of the, uh, uh, the center where a person feels pain. Some, some scientists said it is in the brain. Some others said it's in the spine. And until some German scientists did a lot of experiments and they, ex and they discovered that the, the most uh, or the, the center of the the pain feeling is in the skin. So we say to them, this is what was revealed in the Quran more than 1400 years ago. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Kullama natijat juluduhum, baddalnahum juludan ghayraha. Whenever their, their skins are roasted through, we will replace them with other skins. He didn't say whenever their heart was burnt, we will give them another heart. He didn't say whenever their eyes were uh, burnt, we will give them the, uh, other eyes. But this is to emphasize that the skin is the, the center, is the place to feel pain. Inna hadha. Indeed, this is the true certainty. The true certainty. This is the true certainty. So the true certainty is that the people, the, the believers will be in Jannah. The true cer certainty is that the deniers will be, the opposers will be in hellfire. If we will talk a little bit about certainty, there are three stages of certainty. Ilmu yaqeen the knowledge of certainty. Aynu yaqeen the reality of certainty. And haqqu yaqeen the true certainty. What does this mean? When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told, told us in the Quran that there will be punishment and there will be reward in the day after, then he gave us the knowledge of certainty. So this is the first stage. When it's the day of judgment, people will see hellfire and they will see paradise so this is the reality of certainty but when people would be dropped in hellfire or when people are taken to paradise then this is the true certainty so nothing is denied this is reality, the real reality, the real of reality. So when you see this, when you know this, and when you read this in the Quran, just say Alhamdulillah that you know that you understand what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is promising. فسبح باسم ربك العظيم. For this, exalt the name of your Lord, the Most Great. Worshiping Allah Subhanahu wa Taala will not benefit him, and disobeying him will not harm him. 
actually worshiping Allah is nothing but uh, people are benefiting each others and having mercy in between each other. And disobeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is manifested in just people being unjust to each others, harming each others. So the only thing you have to do is to glorify your Lord who doesn't need our worship or who doesn't care about people's disobedience. Glorify your Lord, exalt your Lord. Fasabbih, exalt, glorify. Bismi Rabbika, Ismi Rabbika, the name of your Lord. The word Allah is said especially for Allah. We never ever heard anyone calling his son or Allah, never. And Allah said it in the Quran. رَبُّ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ وَمَا بَيْنَهُمَا فَاعْبُدْهُ وَاسْطَبِرْ لِعِبَادَتِهِ هَلْ تَعْلَمُ لَهُ سَمِيَّا Lord of heavens and earth and whatever is in between them. So worship him and have patience for his worship. Do you know of any similarity to him? Do you know of anyone who, call, who is called Allah? No. And we, uh, we say Subhan Rabbi al Azim while we are doing the Rukur. And we say Subhan Rabbi al A'la while we are doing our Sujood. So we glorify the name of Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala in our prayers always. So with this, we come to the end of Surah Al Waqarah. And when I started, I said we will mention a few things about Surah Al Waqarah at the end. And inshallah, we have a few minutes here to say a few words about Surah Al Waqarah. Uh, we mentioned at the beginning that the word Al Waqarah is one of the names of the uh, of the Day of Judgment, and it has many names. Al-Waqi'ah, Al-Tamma, al haqa al qariah And we mentioned that each name is looked at from a specific angle. And one of the great scholars who explains and who gives tafsir of the Quran says, من أراد علم الأولين والآخرين والثواب والعقاب فليقرأ سورة الواقع. Whoever wants to learn about the previous and the latest and to know about the reward and the punishment, then let him read سورة الواقع. Some people say we work so hard, so we want to guarantee a good future for our children. But one of the righteous people said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Quran, And let those guardians fear injustice as if they themselves had left weak offspring behind and feared for them. So let them fear Allah and speak words appropriate uh, of appropriate justice. Let them say some right, correct words. When, when this uh, friend of Allah read this surah, someone uh, read this ayah, someone asked him, Ya ibn Abdul Aziz, tatruku banatika sabr? So you are dying and you have seven, seven daughters. And he says, 
لا أخشى عليهم من الفقر وقد علمتهن سورة الواقعة I would never fear poverty that will happen to them because I taught them سورة الواقعة So إن كنا صالحات فإن الله كان للأوابين غفورا If they were righteous, if my daughters are righteous, then he is ever, Allah is ever to the after returning people, to the often returning people, he is the forgiving. وَإِن كُنَّ غَيْرَ ذَلِكَ فَلَا أُعْطِيهِنَّ مَا يَتَقَوَّيْنَ بِهِ عَلَى مَعْصِيَةِ اللَّهِ But if they were not righteous, I would never leave them money, I would never leave them anything that will help them to disobey Allah. Now consider this, reflect on this in our life. We provide our kids with everything. How are they spending it? How are they spending it? Is it in the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Or is it in disobeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? We are responsible as parents. Sayyidina Uthman radiallahu an once was visiting uh, uh, Sayyidina Abdullah bin Mas'ud, who was on his deathbed. And earlier, he used to give him some money. Sayyidina Uthman used to give Sayyidina Abdullah, but he, he stopped it. So when he visited him, uh, Sayyidina Uthman asked him, what, what are you complaining with? What's, what's your problem? What are you feeling? What are you complaining of? He said, Zunubi, my sins. He didn't say, I am hurt in uh, my stomach or I, am, I have a headache. No. He knows what to say. He knows that he's going to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala soon and he is afraid that his sins will not be forgiven. This is what was worrying him. So Sayyidina Osman asked him, what do you wish? He says, I wish the mercy, I, I, I am looking forward the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, my Lord. So he asked him, should I give you back the money that I used to give? He said, منعتني منه وأنا صحيح وتريد أن تعيده وأنا أحتضر you deprived me when I was uh, uh, not sick, and now why I am when I am dying, you want to give me money? I don't want your money. He says, it will be for your daughters and for your sons. He says, no, my daughters would not need it. Because I taught them Surah al waqiah and I heard from رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم من يعلم أولاده سورة الواقعة لا يرى فقرا أبدا Whoever teaches his children سورة الواقعة will never, will never fear poverty And as I said at the beginning also remember that رزق provision does not only mean money it means health it means knowledge. It means uh, everything good that would benefit man, that would benefit the human being. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to provide for us. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us of the people who thank him for everything he provides for us. We thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the blessing of the Quran. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us of the people of the Quran because he said, Ahlullah, uh, Sayyidina Muhammad said, uh, Ahlul Quran, hum Ahlullah wa khasatuh. The people of the Quran are the, the, the people of Allah and they are the special people of Allah. This is our class for today. والحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد المرسلين سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون 
وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين إن شاء الله our next surah we will be doing we will be trying to understand surah tabarak surah al-mulk والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته